Ealing City Learning Centre and these Year 9 students from Acton High School, West London, form themselves into a tight journalistic team. Who's going to do news? I'll do news. Aware of the roles they will have to perform, they are about to unite English and media studies with cutting-edge technology. My role is to make sure um, everyone's articles are appropriate for teenagers and stuff like that. Over two days, they will produce Newsine, a topical teenage publication to be blogged for the entertainment of their peers. Gina Reeves leads the project. It's a scheme of work that can easily be modified for the resources available for use in a school classroom setting. To create an environment where the children feel happy to continue on with their learning and they feel, have this confidence in their ability, the key to it is to choose subject matters and key points that really interest the pupils. On any issue... Or the students topic, are accompanied by Anne Johnston, okay? head of the English department at Acton oh, High School. Your text, though, not your pictures. The students work in editorial teams to research and write their articles. Asala and Christine are creating an article about anime, Japanese animation. Media, maybe. So let's see how well, much we found our research by going on the search engine. We also found quite a lot of information we didn't know about before. OK, so why don't you print it out and then you can use that as your checklist as you go around to check that what the people are doing. As a teacher, your role becomes to monitor them. You take a step backwards and you then are looking over and acting as an advisor almost to them. So you get, your role goes a step higher. They, if you like, then become the teachers and you then become this person that advises them and gives them some sort of counsel towards what it is that they're doing. And it's that level of, so that extra level of responsibility that the children pick up on that gives them this confidence to really take something and actually run with it. That's good. How many ones have you done so far? Um. What the students get out of this project is it allows them to take some control over what it is that they're learning, to work together collaboratively in groups, to peer evaluate each other's work, and it allows them to take some sort of ownership and to develop a confidence in their own ability because they're in an environment that they feel very comfortable with, where they're happy to tell each other their opinions. Deputy Editor Abdul assists Mohammed in the writing of his article on Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein has been found guilty of crimes against humanity and sentenced to death by an Iraqi court by for his part in the killing of 148 Shia Muslims in the jail in 1982. What, if I was you, what I would do is I would think about the, um, the four, three W's and the H, which is when, where, why, and how. So what I would do is get um, a couple of pack, two paragraphs for each, um, and then sum it up and shorten it down. That's what I would do. It's like, yeah. I'm just copy and pasting in the BBC World program, the thing that I've just found. I'm learning more in this exercise um, how to um, gather, um, a, um, gather information about things that happen in the Middle East. More than half. Um, finding out what sort of um, people's final draft is so I can like, make some comments and tell them what they should have, should have done. But you can't write in the first person. Because you're not Lil Bawa. I mean, Lil Romeo. No, it's like, kind of like a more interview kind of thing when he's kind of like saying out like, what he does in his days, more like. Okay. I learned to be patient because not everybody was like doing things the way they, they like you wanted them to be. Everyone was doing it their own way, so you have to be a bit more patient and like relaxed towards your um, employees. <laughs> So this is basically it? Yeah. So you've cut it down? Yeah. That's good. So that's what I wanted. As the children complete the first draft of their articles, it's time to have editorial meetings with editor Hannah. Anne Johnston sits in on these. That's what it is for the third generation. OK, right, I think that mainly just like the ones that you've put down as WAP and stuff like that, just like tell, tell people what it is. 
I think they learned about being journalists that it's actually really hard work. It's not just a matter of uh, writing an article and um, giving it to, to the editor. They have to spend a lot of time actually refining their work. And uh, they also have to learn, I think, to accept criticism. It's quite hard, I think, for them to go to a peer and give their work to a peer and ask that peer to evaluate it and accept that evaluation. Another question I wanted to ask is, in this paragraph beginning, you'll find Bluetooth, it uses a common protocol. Is protocol um, a, a word associated with mobile phones? Because I understand, the mini, I, I understand a different meaning to protocol, and I'm not sure that students your age would understand what that meant. What, what's your mean, what do you think the meaning of protocol means? Um, um, one strength is that uh, I get to learn about the technology from them, and then they learn grammatical language skills, etc., from me. Uh, I, think this, uh, I think this project makes makes these students um, aware of the language that they need to use because they, they knew that they, their audience was teenagers. So uh, what word do you think that you could use as an alternative to protocol? Connective system, maybe. Yeah, or transmitter because yeah, because it basically is a connective system, um, a way to send things from one mobile to another. Okay, so you need to come to some sort of agreement which one of those two you think best fits and which um, yeah. the, your audience would understand. Yeah. Having observed the project, the um, discussion in pairs, discussion with the editor, the sub-editor, was a vital part. And also, I'll write in paragraphs, and the first paragraph I'll write about his background resource, second one, reason for, for meaning, was um, what he did to... Yeah, what, yeah. what the things he's done, because so yeah. many people like are really baffled with what he's done. Yeah, no true. one wants to know, because some people think it's injustice to kill him, but then you've got to have a really good reason to put people by death. They learn about um, expressing themselves, uh, maybe about subjects that they don't know very much about, they've had to research. They learn how to paragraph and construct um, an article correctly. They learn about proofreading. Um, a lot of our students will write very quickly and not proofread afterwards. We go to our article and we highlight all of that. When the articles are completed, the students add them to the blog, which has already been set up by Gina. Have it. Blogs are fairly simple to set up and there are many, many freely downloadable blogs online which have very simple instructions that take you through them stage by stage. So uh, in terms of technical support, it's at its absolute minimum. You probably would only need to have a network uh, technician in the school who could probably help you get the blog downloaded onto your actual computer. Pressure upload. Once you get used to loading blogs up and setting a blog up, it comes down to actually about a five minute job that you can probably do at the beginning of the day before you want to use it. With all the articles on the Newsine blog, the pupils are able to access and comment on each other's work. Jihan and Ning comment on Mohammed's article on Saddam Hussein. No, I just write that. I think that it's actually a really good article and I agree with them. The advantages of blogging are that it gives children the scope to open their work out to a wider audience. It allows parents to access and see what children are doing. They can comment on it. They can see what their friend in a class down the corridor is doing and they can participate. And it's that nature of participation that's so nice about blogs. They're quite happy to go online onto a blog and to cast their opinions. They don't feel that they're being judged. And it's a lot less scary to a child to see someone comment on their piece of work online than it is to see, say, a red mark for it or a comment put beside it by a teacher. Um, a good use of words. Mm -hmm. uh, be better. OK. How could it be better? Uh, You're going to tell the person. By... Good. I would say that um, my, te my technology skills are not particularly high level, but I would feel 100% happy about using blogging in my lessons now, having had the experience today. Adding information about what? Because um, you won't know what information to add if you don't tell him or her. Uh, about... Some person said, um, um, you really, this is a fantastic article, I've really learned a lot, thank you. It made me feel f proud of what I did and how I wrote my article and and uh, how I displayed it to others. That, that comments are very good. So why do you think they'd say that? What do you think they wouldn't like about that article? Maybe 
I don't know. Maybe they just think that we weren't talking about a very popular subject. By our article being on the blog, we can check all the reviews and stuff, what people commented on, and we can check on that and see oh, what they thought of it and how we can change it next time. Similar, They're quite sad. They were to run a departmental inset session, showing them what the students actually achieved, showing them the blog, showing them how other students can make comments on that, and then we can show the students on the interactive whiteboard. I think maybe I would start by asking them to comment on the blogs that the students produced today, and then move on to to show them how to do blogs themselves. The major problem we have from blogging is the security issue. Anything that's online is going to pose a security threat. We get over those problems quite simply by first having the blog as a closed, secure unit, whereby it's hosted on our servers and it can only be accessed by people who are given a password to be able to get into it. That allows us time to then work with things like school filters, where we can actually program school filters using technical staff to be able to cut out any obscene comments or anything that would pose a security threat to the school. The blog goes online. The students from Acton High School link up with students from Birch's Head High School in Stoke-on-Trent via video conferencing. They have accessed each other's articles via the blog and what they have learned opens up a long distance debate. Do you agree or disagree that Saddam Hussein should be put to death? I think he should be killed because um, to punish him for what he's done to other people. Okay. I disagree because I think no one should take someone's life, only God should. On this project, the children uh, found the video conferencing quite fascinating because they were talking to a school in Stoke-on-Trent that had a very different ethnic mix and a very different background to their own school. And they found it quite interesting to see how their backgrounds and their the differences in their lives made such a difference to the opinions that they had. And they reused it to raise topical issues and to find out exactly why these, di these differences occur in their opinions. George Bush, yeah, took away um, other lives in Iraq um, instead of Saddam. He took away um, like thousands of thousands of um, lives. Um, so why are you blaming Saddam instead of blaming George Bush and others? I think George Bush went there to help people get a better life, but Saddam was going to make it worse for them. I think they had uh, more interest in the people from this country and news from this country rather than the uh, uh, outside world. I think that um, Saddam Hussein shouldn't have a choice whether he dies by a um, hang or rifle because he, he took people's lives and they never had a choice yet. So I really I like that... video conferencing because it was really good to um, interact with people from our age from another Region. He should be punished brutally because of what he's done. They shared my views personally, but not exactly everyone's views, but I liked the way they weren't biased. At the end of the project, what does editor Hannah think she and her team have learned? I think being an editor is a very demanding job, let's say, because like you're putting the reins, basically. It was a really good group effort. I think everyone made a good input to everything.